it's Terry Gaines. I'm going to give you some assembly tips on creating this cute little box. It's got a sliding closure. Move that heart image down and you can open up the flap. And I've designed this to fit three little note cards. These are the perfect size for the three by three envelopes that Stampin' Up! sells. And um, it works perfect for note cards or you could put little gifts in there or chocolate. At the end of the video, I will share the dimensions and how I modified it for the little tulip. The little tulip slides down and these little note cards have the tulip design. So um, I have some assembly tips for this. This was inspiration from a YouTube video that I watched. In the comments section, I'll have a direct link to the YouTube video that inspired me to make this box. So for this box, we need three pieces of cardstock. We need a piece of cardstock that's the base of the box that is five and a quarter by seven and a half, and then a piece of cardstock that is three and a quarter by 10 and three quarters, and then a one inch circle. So those are the pieces that we need along with whatever image is going to be embellished. So I'm gonna bring the Simply Scoring tool in here. And on my blog, I'll have a direct link in the bottom of the video if you found me via YouTube. I will have all of the dimensions and a PDF you can download. So for this five and a quarter by seven and a half, along the seven and a half inch side, it's going to be scored at three and a quarter and four and a quarter. Rotate it along the five and a quarter inch side. It is going to be scored at one inch and at four and a quarter. And right at two and five eighths, I'm gonna just make about a quarter inch mark. That's going to be where the circle is um, cut out of here. So on the, I'll bring this in, maybe this is still on the camera. For this piece of cardstock, it is scored at three and a quarter, four and three eighths, six and one half, seven and three quarters, and eight and seven eighths. All right, so that's the scoring we need to do on both of these. Now, I'm going to start out with the box. What I'm going to do is crease all of these score lines inward and up both of these. So anytime you're creating a box or changing the shape, it's a good idea to do a nice crease and the bone folder works perfect for that. So the next thing I'm going to do is take right where I put this two and five eighths mark I'm going to take a two inch circle punch and center it right in here and just punch out a portion of that circle. We just need a little bit of space and this here is to help get the contents of the box out. Then on the ends, I'm going to take a paper snip. So I'm gonna do a straight cut right into the intersection of the score lines. Both of these and then I'm going to take a sliver of material out from the center tab, not these end tabs, but the center tab. I'm going to do that on both sides of this. And that's gonna help um, decrease the, the material um, just all forming together at that same spot. So just on these center tabs, keep these ends straight. The next thing I'm going to use is tear and tape and apply to these two, these two tabs and these two tabs. And just to save a little bit of video time, I've already got that part done. And the tear and tape is a strong adhesive to use and I didn't apply it right to the folds or right to the edge, but it's a adhesive that you apply and then you've got the backing to take off. So I'm gonna grab my Take your pick tool and just peel the backing off of all of these ends or all of these um, strips of tear and tape. I'm just gonna um, do this. And this is a strong adhesive that's going to hold the box well. And what I forgot to do on this sample that I just brought in is I forgot to crease all the ends with the bone folder. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crease them backwards and that was a, oops. But um, my videos do contain bloopers, mainly misspoken words or technical issues, but um, just pretend that we've scored this correct or folded that with a bone folder. So now that we have all this tear and tape exposed, what I'm going to do is bring these on these tabs that have no adhesive in first and then adhere this little tab to the outside of this one. The reason I'm doing that is if that little tab is sandwiched between these two tabs, it doesn't get caught in here. It's not gonna make the note cards and the envelopes get caught on the inside tab. So I'm gonna sandwich those between the end panels. And then I'm going to use, just fold this and then we have our box. So that is the box that the note cards are gonna fit into. This piece is going to be the piece of cardstock that wraps around that. So we've got these score lines in here and we do want to, again, crease all of these and I'll go ahead and use the bone folder to do that. What I'm going to do is make these openings for the slider to be, um, I'm going to use the classic label punch for that. This is a wonderful punch to use for multiple different things. So the first one I'm going to do is the slit that the image is going to be on. So this is along the zero part where we started at zero, scored at three and a quarter and so forth. I'm going to let it rest all the way down in the punch, use my finger as a guide to feel the edge of the cardstock, and punch out that opening. I only need it one width there. I'm gonna slide it all the way to the other end. I'm going to use this last score line, fold it so it's resting against the side of the punch, and the cardstock is resting all the way down the punch, and punch that out. Then I have them equal on both sides by resting it all the way down. So that's how these pieces get determined. And this is going to be with this box. It's gonna wrap around the box like so. So now what I need to do is apply tear and tape on the back panel, the panel that's attached to the back, and some dimensionals here. So I already have that done to save some time, and I'll explain how I did this. And so I don't forget, because I did not crease this, I'm gonna go ahead and crease this with the bone folder so I don't forget like I did on that last piece. So a tear and tape here. This is the bottom. I don't want any adhesive on the bottom. That's going to allow me to get the right placement before things get adhered. And I placed dimensionals here because the slider is going to be going on this side and we just need some depth here. The slider is actually part of a attached to a one inch circle. So I put the first dimensionals halfway between, we, between this opening and the edge and then a couple on the side. So you want this circle to be able to slide back and forth without hitting dimensionals. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply the tear and tape to the back of the box. So I'm going to take this this off, take the box, and I'm going to let it rest on this bottom panel. This tear and tape gets adhered to the part with the cutout, with the circle cut, and I want it to go back all the way flush to that score, that fold. So I can hold my fingers like that, and I can wrap that around and that's going to adhere to the back of the box. There's a little bit of space here to allow the dimensionals, the width of the dimensionals. Before I apply that, I need to take the one inch circle, attach one dimensional right to the center. This is going to go in from the back so the dimensional will slide up and down on the front. I'm actually gonna hold that in place by just twisting it a little bit and it'll stay in place long enough for me to take the backings off of the dimensionals. And get all these backings off. 
and then what I can do is wrap this around and it will attach to the front of the box. I'm gonna rotate that down a little bit, bring it, rotate it so it slides, bring that all the way down. My image I'm going to put on here is a heart image and I've punched this out of the new from your from my heart designer series paper with the heart um, regular heart and then the flirty flamingo is the scalped heart. I'm going to bring this all the way to the bottom. Got I took the backing off. I'm going to rest my line my image up to the bottom and center it. And now it's attached to that dimensional. I can close the box and slide that up. So that's how the little box is made. The note cards are super simple. They're three by six, whisper white, scored at three, and then just pop those on with dimensionals. So the modifications for this box, it's assembled just like the previous box that I just did. The only modifications would be, is when I made the box, I wanted the pear pizzazz to be looking like the stem. My first prototype, I actually made the box to be pear pizzazz on this, um, this one, but I actually like the box to be the same size or the same color. So I just inserted a one and a half by three inch piece of cardstock and adhered that before I attached the wraparound panel. The wraparound panel is the same width, but it is 10 and a quarter. So I made it a half inch smaller. And I also ran this panel through the subtle folder and these four end panels through the tuft folder. And that allows me to get a little bit of texture. So then when I apply this one, you will see the tulips through, or the green through there like a stem. And this is slightly smaller in height, so the tulip can be attached and go all the way down. So it is a very fun little box to make and semi-easy. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found me via YouTube, look in the comment section for a direct link to my blog post where you can find, this, find the supply list, measurements, and instructions for this project. There will be a PDF tutorial you can download. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the red box under the video. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope you, you enjoyed creating this project with me.